Welcome to another episode of Modern Bok. Thank you for joining me. So today I thought I'd just go through some of the warm-up games from um, the to from the actual last few weeks from the Northern Hemisphere mainly. Just focusing on them. I've given a little bit of rugby championship discussion to that, so I thought I'd give a little bit of warm-up games there. It's been some interesting results. And it shows you, unfortunately, it's so tough to take these results into account. Um, just before the World Cup, coaches are trying things. Players are trying to play into the, uh, play into the team almost. And other players are trying to... Uh, almost not get injured. Unfortunately, that affects really the tournament and it also affects selections in these games. So, all of that has to be taken with a pinch of salt and all the results you've taken a pinch of salt. But yeah, I thought I'd go through some of the results. Uh, so, Scotland, up and down. Lose to France, beat France, but it's home and away situations here for them. And that's something that France and Scotland have to think about is that they really perform well at home, great stats at home, but as soon as they leave Scotland, they can't play. Something <laughs> South African teams also have an issue with, but they definitely do, and, and it's stock in this note is noticeable here. So I think they need to consider that, figure that out, and understand it. Um, they definitely have. Um, uh, I think Finn Russell. I think is probably one of their best players at the moment. At the fly, is really doing some good performances. Um, tactically genius. Uh, having s some some on off games, but overall tactically a good player, and really they fall apart without him. Uh, Hodge also good. So I think it's it was a good showing and a good warm up to the tournament, but. Unfortunately, I think they can't take everything from it, and hopefully it's all about learning at this point. Um, I think it's just giving some game time to players who haven't had. So Scotland, shaky, but I think still positive. Ireland demolished this last weekend. I don't understand that. Um, I think it is a very, very up and down warm-up for them. Italy game, good game, although trying things out, took a break, and then this week they swapped out a bunch of players, and the swap-out did not work. I think I don't know if the question here comes into this, we have to ask all these games is, was it England trying to show dominance, or was it Ireland changing too many players, trying out too many things and just not gelling? But definitely questions to be asked, and lessons I think can be learned for both teams. So it's not the end for Ireland. Ireland are a definite contender in this World Cup, and nobody should take this, take this with a massive pinch of salt. It's just a case of, um, I think they showed weaknesses, and that's also valuable. So hopefully the coaching staff take that forward and see that. They have a great forward pack, probably one of the best in the world, especially at prop. So um, playing to their strengths, understanding the squad they need, I just think that I don't think they could learn enough from such a demolishing, and hopefully they learned what they needed to. Wales taking world number one. Um, no, nothing's better than that in a warm-up area. Obviously it's a little bit... Up and down, nothing really matters until the World Cup. Wales have had some good warm-up games against England. Win, uh, win or loss. The win, some people are questioning con uh, conf uh, a little bit on that side. But I think Gatlin's got some plans. I think it did actually lead to a World Rugby law change, I noticed, on the, uh, on the news. That now you cannot actually play until the replacement for a concussion actually gets um, it's put on the field. As that did cause some controversy. But at least it brought up in the before the World Cup instead of during the World Cup. So we'll see how it goes. Overall, Wales, I think, have figured out their jam, figured out their understanding, and I think there's nothing, they, they, they've they got the plan they need to go forward. It's all, all about uh, depth now and making sure they don't get injuries, so it's a case of wrap up the players and bubble wrap and get them to the World Cup. That's also all it's going to be about now. So, Wales, I think, are ready and have had some good performances, um, stemming the tide from the first game, but I do think this whole warm-up period for me, England is just trying to showcase dominance, so I don't think Wales need to worry about the first loss. It's one of those things. So yeah, France, again, similar to Scotland, um, win, loss, home away, um, yeah, that's, that's up and down, but just like French rugby is, um, World Cup history notes that, that on the day France can beat the best team in the world, and on the day they can lose the worst team in the world. Um, unfortunately, I don't know why, it's, a, it's a definitely a thought of consistency, I've heard some reviews on that fact that the defensive patterns, I feel like they play a lot, they play with a lot of passion, but that passion leads to um, players leaving positions, leaving channels, leaving their um, defensive patterns out, and both Scotland and France need to look at this as it can cause huge holes for teams who know to exploit that and can see that. The coaching staff ex examined that and noticed that and exploited it very quickly, and that's something that they need to consider going into this World Cup. Passion is a huge part of the game, but control and uh, consistency are just as important in following the game plan, especially your own team's game plan, not letting the other team force you into theirs. England, as I've said throughout this whole video, dominating, effectively dominating their, their warm-up games. I think Eddie Jones is trying to, to sh almost show 
what has happened considering the, obviously everybody, the doubters from the rugby, Six Nations and all that and I think he's trying to build into a confidence thing which is nothing to be questioned about that. Sometimes the team just needs to feel that they're winning to continue winning ways. So a strategy from him that's really interesting and always a coach to watch in a World Cup year. So yeah, I think overall Northern Hemisphere has really showed some interesting things. It's all about trying out things just like what the Southern Hemisphere did in the Rugby Championship. So let's see how this plays into the World Cup, what kind of lessons they learn. Uh, but all it shows is that they're leading into a stunning North vs. South World Cup that is really going to be interesting to see. So yeah, thanks guys. Please comment down below, please share. And yeah, let me know if you have anything else to say. Thanks guys.